Hey guys, welcome to another beautiful but very cold day here at the cabin. Current temperature, uh, 9 below 0 Fahrenheit. That's about 25 below 0 uh, Celsius. Yeah, very cold. But I wanted to show you guys uh, my solar setup today. So let's go check it out. Basically, I have a 100 watt panel that runs the few electronic things that I have here. Uh, I set this up in 2012 when I built the cabin. Uh, it works pretty good for me. Um, let's have a look, pan around. Okay, here we go. There's my solar panel. You don't see it? Exactly, that's the point. It's actually on the roof of the uh, porch and that's not the best angle for it but when i come down here i don't want to see solar panels i don't want to see that kind of stuff so yeah so let's go up on the on the roof and check it out so there is my one 100 watt solar panel on the roof of the porch Look over, I got lots of room for to add more panels. No problem there for growth. I could easily have five or six of those. And if we swing over, we can see the sun and behind that oak tree. Almost one o'clock in the afternoon. I may have to cut that oak tree down. It does block out some of the sun I don't want to but I may have to all right it's cold out here let's go inside okay so under here is the rest of the uh, solar setup so the panel is wired into this box. This is my charge controller. This is an MPPT charge controller, and it's uh, they're a little more expensive than the basic ones, but they do a much better job. They're a lot more efficient. Uh, when I first put this in, I had one of these uh, cheap $20 ones, and yeah, you get what you pay for. That's no good. So I did get this new one. Uh, that's wired to my my two batteries. So those are two batteries running in parallel, two 12 volt batteries. Those are marine uh, deep cycle batteries. They are 12 volt. Uh, so running in parallel, that gives me, they're each 100 amp hour, so that's 200 amp hours. Now those batteries were fairly expensive and I, I, I know they're not the best for solar but these do have some advantages. Um, one, they are maintenance free, so you don't have to do anything to them. And two, uh, they don't have any gas, uh, so you can use them inside. They don't gas at all. They're safe for indoor use. And th that's what I like about them. Um, I think the disadvantage is they're a little more expensive and they're not as good for renewable energy they don't they don't work as well for having a small drain constantly from what i understand they're meant more for cranking amps and i probably would have been better off with uh two uh six volt batteries running in series but anyways these suit my purpose and uh, they've been running for five years and i'm quite happy with them and, and those are running into my 1,000-watt pure sin wave inverter, which you can see it displays the, the voltage, and it switches back and forth from voltage to current watts being used. It's registering zero because I'm really not using enough power for it to register. Um... And that is wired directly into the cabin, and that runs my electricity. So that's it. Um, 
that's the setup. Okay, so I am running a LED floodlight outside. And uh, inside I have one, two, three, four LED light bulbs. I also have a small window fan that I'm running as well as my laptop. I like to uh, watch some movies down here in the winter time. The nights are long. I also have my uh, cell phone uh, booster, signal booster, which works really well. I went from zero bars down here to four bars. So yeah, that thing really works well. I have my Christmas lights still up, of course. And yeah, that's all I'm running down here. That's all my power requirements are. So yeah, the 100 watt system does quite well for this. So as you see, I don't have a lot of power requirements down here. So when I put this solar system in, when I built the cabin in 2012, my goal was to never start a generator. That's ideally what I wanted. Um, as for what I have invested, I got about a thousand dollars. The panel, the solar panel was a hundred. The charge controller was a hundred. The batteries were expensive. They were 600 for both. Um, and I got the, the, uh, inverter on sale for half price, about 150. So I got about a thousand dollars invested and it works decently. I would say from May through about October. I don't have any issues at all. I never have to start a generator. I can run everything I got. Um, of course, th that's the best time. I mean, the, the days are, are obviously longer. There's more sunlight. And, well, you're probably not inside as much either. So you're probably not using as much power in those months. From November through till April, I would say I have to pretty much use the generator in the evenings. I use the solar in the mornings or maybe just before I go to bed after I shut the generator off. There's just not enough. There's just not enough power to uh, uh, to last in the evenings when the days are that short. You just it's not enough. So I've been thinking about maybe improving this a little bit in the future. And I'm not sure, but I think. I'm thinking to go with two more 100 watt panels. That would give me a total of 300 watts. Now in the summertime, that would be obvious overkill and I definitely wouldn't need that much power unless, because the other idea I've been toying with is buying one of those small um, solar powered fridges. Well, it would be electric, but you plug it in and it would run off of the, off of the solar. Uh, yeah. And I think that would be more than enough to run that all those summer months. And that would be great because then I wouldn't have to bring coolers down all the time and ice. And and, and I thought that would be pretty pretty neat to have a, a little fridge in here that just ran off of solar. Uh, and, and I only need it during those months anyways because in the cooler months, I'm not as worried about it. Um, I have a back room that I can keep stuff in that keeps stuff pretty cool. Or, you know, or I can bring a cooler down, whatever. I don't have to worry as much about ice. So, yeah, so those are some of the ideas that I was kind of kind of toying with. Uh, thinking about bumping it up to 300 watts. Of course, then I'd have to buy another charge controller because this one isn't big enough to uh, handle uh, 300 watts. So I'd also have to buy that. So I'd probably be looking at another, uh, probably 600 bucks or so. Time you buy the charge controller. You buy a good one, maybe 500 if I can get a good deal. But I don't know if I really want to invest that kind of money right now. It's not, uh, it's not super important to me, but uh, this is what I have for now, and it works great. So, yeah, if you're wondering um, what you could expect from a 100-watt uh, solar system, this is it. So uh, if you have, you know, if you guys have any questions, um, ask away, leave a comment below. Uh, if you guys have any tips for me, uh, let me know. I'm always uh, looking to learn more about this stuff and there's probably a lot of people out there who know a lot more than I do. So do leave a comment below. And uh, that's it for now. So thanks for watching. 
Uh, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time here at the cabin.